Thanks for checking out the Rudits and Loz podcast, driven by the Ford Ranger Raptor, inspired by desert racing. Ford Ranger Raptor has been developed by the Australian design and engineering team with Ford Performance DNA for true enthusiasts. Oh, hello. On this Wednesday morning, Rudits and Loz with you. How is everyone this morning? Great. Great, turn yourself on, Loz. Sorry, there we go. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. It's a bit of a Friday. It some... does a little bit, yeah. yeah. Holiday. We're working on Friday. Holiday tomorrow. Got a bit yeah. of an itch. Everyone's taking Friday off mostly a lot of around people the world, are. except yeah. us, which is fine. Everyone's. <laughs> that time we did the extra yard. I know. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, Anzac Day Eve, I can tell you, uh, Limo's going to join us, yep. who uh, always gives us a laugh on a Wednesday, but he's got a real, real what touching story to he tell does. us. Great story to tell us about Anzac Day. Yep. Yeah, I'm very excited well, to hear. Well, he uh, goes and entertains troops. That's right, he does. Pieces, yeah. So he'd have a big connection with that. Yeah, he definitely does. A, uh, our cardboard cutouts, we're going to give away a big, big prize today. Yes, we are. We're giving away the grandioso prize. So first, second and third place will be handed out. I'm actually really nervous because these people have been out with our cardboard cutouts trying to get as much exposure with these things as possible. It's been a points-based system. They've worked so hard on this. Yeah. I've... I can't even explain how much content they've developed for us. So um, I'm really anxious it's, for them. It's been great, but it's not going to be as interesting as the phone we're doing today. The worst place you've had a poo. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. That's <laughs> yeah. happening at quarter past What's seven. this on the back of? It's on the back of we're talking about Anzac Day and going to the uh, uh, all the Dawn, uh, Dawn service. services. And Tex said, well, he took his lads there last year and he needed to have a poo. There was no toilet there, so he made him poo in a cardboard box. Yeah, that's right. Not, not Tex, his son, his son needed to poo in a cardboard box. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a different headline, yeah, so isn't it? We'll be doing that a bit after seven. Yeah. Get all the news you need. 104.7 Triple M. Hello, Adelaide. No one knows Adelaide like these guys. Triple M Breakfast with Rue Dits and Lies. Overnight news. Uh, just want to start with this story saying it's un-Australian, it's bulldust, it's mm. not right. Uh, we're going to get charged to use cash. What? This is what they're saying. What do you mean? Financial experts, well, Scott Pape, the Barefoot Investors are suggesting that cash now is in the minority, as we know. Yeah. And so, therefore, to use it, it's going to become expensive for cafes and banks and everyone to handle it. They're going to start charging so, us to use cash. How does that work? Well, you know, at the moment, what do you get? 1.5% sometimes when you yeah. use your credit card. Yeah. Uh, so, I guess, let's say you buy something for $10, they'll say, oh, that's now $11.20. Mm. It's $10, but it's actually $11.20. Okay. I, th- I think because sure. they're going to get charged by armor guards and all these mobs to handle cash. And as we know, banks, every time you walk in and speak to a teller now, there's a charge. You know, you're getting bank fees. Yeah. Okay, so then they stop charging us for credit credit cards? No, no, Apparently sure not. Is not. No, well, no, though, no, hang no, on a no. second. Because if one of the – okay, if they're charging us because it's inconvenient, mm. then it can't be inconvenient for both. Well, Who's I'd, charging us for the use cash? It's inconvenient for you to spend money. Is uh, it the shop owner or the – that bit I don't know. That's because a good question. But he, the, the barefoot investor, just saying that because it'll be in the minority. And the other thing he said, one dollar and two dollar coins will will go back to notes because they weigh too much. Therefore, armor guard or the like to handle it. So it's mm. actually gonna we're gonna lose those coins. Yeah, they probably need to charge more now. I think because the banks haven't made much of a profit. No, no. It's battling, no, not at all. Just battling to keep hey. the head above water. What? But rude to answer you, I'm guessing here. The it's cafe would charge you because the bank is going to charge the cafe, yeah. aren't they? So mm. I think every it'll mm. it'll get passed on to us. Yep. And then everyone it's will... It's just gotten to the point where it's just ridiculous. Oh, they're not making enough laws. No. Nah. <laughs> Crazy. We're spending money and they're charging us for spending yes, money. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, did you want yes. to breathe in that room? They're, That's right. You know, you want surcharge. Yeah. Oh, you blink, shares, surcharge. Mm. Buy Bulled bank us. shares. Crazy. That's all we can do. Uh, another day, unfortunately, another uh, business going broke in the world of hospitality. There's just mm. uh, uh, restaurants and bad. cafes shutting down mm. everywhere at the moment. These are a couple down uh, in our southern suburbs that uh, have shut down, that have just just been too much for them at Hallett Cove. And also uh, the other one was at Morford Vale, Morf- 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 yeah. Sheffy Shelby. Um, but there's, there's just... Not just little ones like this, big award-winning restaurants yep. Yep. shutting down left, right and centre. So when you go out and think, gee, is my snitzer worth 28 bucks? Really? That seems too much. Or they must be making money charging 10 bucks a beer. Uh, they're not. Uh, unfortunately, the costs are going through the roof, whether it's gas prices, electricity prices, rental prices, food costs, you name it, wages. Uh Somehow it's still not stacking up for a lot of these restaurants and cafes around Adelaide. Unfortunately. 
It's really sad. Uh, the, and the ramping crisis we know all about, and um, you know some people are sick of hearing about it. You're not sick of hearing. You, well, you, you are sick of hearing about it when you've lost someone as a result of it. And the front yeah. page of the advertiser today say three more people have died after being stranded in ambulance for hours. Now, you'd be mighty peed off if a loved one of yours uh, uh, died directly as a result of um, waiting in an ambulance, not getting the care that they deserve. I mean, this is a problem not only in here, but it's in all states, I think, and all around yeah, the world, to be is, honest. But we've still got to try and improve it and build more beds. And, you know, we talk about Mally doing a great job. I don't know how if they're going to get on top of it or what the honest truth is. Of, Why is it so flipping hard to fix? And because they built a REH hospital there. This is my understanding, and I might be wrong. They spent a world record on an amount of money in a building and didn't put any more beds in it. Oh no, I, I think the design so of that building not is appalling. Beds. But isn't it a, glo- a, a national crisis? Like yeah, yes, because no is. one perhaps spends enough enough money, money for what we need in our medical care. I think ridiculous. Mm. Um, I tell you what else is ridiculous, and this is. A real knee jerk turn in another direction. Knee jerk. The, the a, a beer and the knee. Thinking <laughs> it. The man with the biggest penis in the United Kingdom mm. has said it's actually inconvenient. Oh really? Yeah. And this is maybe this sounds like a humble brag, and he's like, it's just so hard. <laughs> what are you having doing? Him? Looking up. He's just I've seen a lot of blokes naked. Oh, you've seen a lot of blokes naked, have you? Well, have you seen this bloke, Root? What is he? It was on News.com. I haven't googled this. His name's Matt Barr. And no, the photo hang of on, him. <laughs> up, no, no. That's not his name. It it is. Is. Oh, come on. B A double R. His name could have been Rod or, you know, <laughs> Paul. All right. Come but, on, guys. This is still right. Be that anyway, anyway, it's uh, 12 inches, so it's Pardon? 30.5 centimetres long. Um, and basically, he said that. It's one of those things where people, he doesn't know when to tell someone about it if he's going on a date with them. Do you tell them? At what point? He said it's too creepy. It's creepy to bring it up early. Yeah. But it's also <laughs> not something you want to spring on people um, in, the, in mm. the heat of the moment because, to be quite honest, and mm. this is going to sound, look, it's a, it's, it it's a myth that women want an enormous penis. Thank God for is that. Is it? Yes. So what do they want? Hope for a just soul. normal, just, oh, just normal, average. Not even. I don't even know what normal means. <laughs> average size, because the regular female, the average female anatomy can only accommodate so much, mm. and otherwise it's just painful. What if one's a little bit bigger? What do you do? Yeah, that's fine. Look, that, that, a little bit bigger is fine. But if we're talking freak show, like twelve yeah. inches, yeah. there's not much you can do with so it. So what do you say to the bloke when he pops his twelve inch wanger out? <laughs> it's too big. We only need part of that. Yeah, yeah. Don't need it at all. I can't even say nothing. I can say is how off, for how. Me. Um, <laughs> nah, I've got maybe it. ten jokes just sitting there. Like oh, I'll start with a couple. No, 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 no. I really can't. It's I really can't. <laughs> I was going to ask. No, I'm not even going to ask. No. Oh, anyway, God. so I just want, if you're out there and you've got just an average Joe, you know, be happy. Be happy. Just be happy. That's Don't all. Don't worry. Yeah. Mm. Just can keep be, it clean. That's can, the only thing. Can I be too small? Well, you may keep it clean. Keep, well, you're not going to wash, wash eight inches of it and keep four dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Could run out of soap. No, what I'm saying and is yeah. all we really care about is hygiene at the end of the day. Just What? Bull dust. Whether it? it's big or small, as long as it's clean, that's can the Can it most be too important. small? What, have you seen a dirty one? <sighs> blokes, not all blokes know how to wash properly. That's all I'm going to say. Huh. Wash their old fella. Yeah. It's the first thing you wash when you get in the shower. <laughs> yeah, but they're not very thorough. Some keep washing it. Keep washing it. <laughs> oh. Next. Triple M. You call this archaeology? I always wanted to be an archaeologist when I was growing up, so That's going amazing. over there and dusting. Oh, oh, don't what? laugh at that. Quite seriously, though. Don't, don't you dare laugh at that. I was an archaeologist. Shut up, you <laughs> kid. I would have been a great archaeologist. Put on your khaki pants. And get out your rock hammers. Archaeologists have dug up a 5,000-year-old pub in Iraq. It's time for Archaeology News with Loz. Yes, Rue's snoring already. The only reason why we do this segment is so we can play that opener because it's one of Sammy's best. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, all oh right, we get it. You're tired. Um, some, I just want to shout out someone who sent in something and they didn't put who it was from. Shut up. They sent in the Nile... Magazine, Discovery, Discover Ancient Egypt, Ramses uh, uh, and the Gold of the Ferret. So someone sent me a subscription to a magazine all the way 
from the UK. No. They haven't put a return address. I don't. I mean, oh. I, they put a return address, but it's in Bournemouth in the United Kingdom, which we've looked what, up. You reckon someone's... they've heard about your segment, do they? They must yeah. have. They must have. Someone's oh, the envelope's in, here in front of us. It's in Dorset, been... yeah. and they haven't included anything else. Just this just awesome magazine. magazine. Yeah. Someone's played a trick on you and just, you know. If this is a trick, then great. Yeah. I have a quick look? Yeah, do, do you have a browse? It's, a magazine. it's oh, called Nile. <laughs> it's just making out his interest in Discover ancient <laughs> Egypt today. <laughs> yeah. This is the November 23 edition. It is. Just uh, when you thought Rams you had nothing to do tomorrow, Dits. Ramses and the gold of the pharaohs. <laughs> and oh, how much was it, Dits? It says on the front. It was £5.50. Yeah, £5.50. That ain't cheap. I've sent, had it sent over. <laughs> anyway, I oh. actually do want to talk about Egypt because, you know, the Egyptians, they were all over it. They just, they knew so much more than we probably realised they do. We lost a lot of the um, archives in the big fire of Alexandrina. So we don't know how much they knew. The what? The great fire of Alexandrina. Mm. It was a big fire that wiped out a massive library that had uh, all of this information that we lost. Oh. And um, put our we society in the just humans. World or yeah, yeah. It put our society back like hundreds of years, maybe more. But uh, so the Milky Way, which is the um, galaxy that contains this solar system, was first sort of discovered officially by Galileo in 1610 with his big telescope, an Italian guy. But it turns out that the Egyptians were well aware of it, like a thousand years before that. And what? they well aware of what the Milky Way. The galaxy, because they were astronomers and they used to look to the sky. They basically figured out that there's 365 days in a year, um, that there need to be 24 hour days just by watching the sky. They were, they were all over it. But the paintings of the That's goddess. Be patient to work that out. Oh, bloody patient. Well, they had thousands of years to do it. They were just uninterrupted rain. Incredibly. I mean, they were, you know, pretty brutal, but uh, they had amazing technology for their time. And they, in the paintings of Newt, which is the goddess of the sky. What? Paintings of who? Yeah. The goddess of the sky, her name's Newt. She was their sky goddess. Right. People now have discovered that in these paintings that are sort of, you know, the Egyptian sort of quite archetypal paintings that they have, the Milky Way can be seen in them. The stars that get we out. know now that were discovered <laughs> hundreds of years, a thousand years later by Galileo. They were aware of it and they knew about it and they put them in the paintings before we had telescopes, before we had all of that. And then it all got forgotten about and lost. And then someone rediscovered it in 1610, Galileo. Knocked me over with a feather. They were ahead of their time. They were. I'm just reading about the following eye phenomenon. Do you know about that? Where the eye looks at you and you walk yes, around the room. Yes. Yeah, I could, when you yeah. look at a hot woman walking the t- <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Got one eye. <laughs> Dits has got the following I'm answer. knee deep in this Dits magazine. Looks for a book. He doesn't do this much research before the show. I long. know. Ramesses 11's <laughs> coffin. The paper yeah. quick. He reads the advertiser quicker than that. Mm. And he's got photographic memory too, so yeah. this is all going in the bank. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying watching Dits flick through this magazine. Anyway, to whoever sent me this magazine, I just want to say thank you very much. And to everyone else, 04 I just want to... if you sent Loz the archaeology magazine, let yeah. us know. Hmm. And to everyone else... You can I be just, anonymous. just want to apologise for this segment. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> uh, forcing a, can it I just read you. a sentence for you, Ruth? This will be <laughs> yeah, up no, your alley. Hang on, I'll write it down. All right. Uh, the sarcophagus of the king of Menapet was... Sarcophagus, yeah. Yeah. What the hell does that Did mean? Did he pronounce it wrong? What, what, the, sarcophagus, the sarcophagus is what they put them yeah, in. Yeah, esophagus. The sarcophagus. Sarcophagus <laughs> is what they put their bodies in when they embalm them. Right. Why don't they just That's call it a That's a sarcophagus, coffin? Ditch. It's, it's called like a bloody coffin. Well, that's what they, they didn't have that word. It's a different word. Okay. Archaeologists always use long words. Mm, they do. Yeah. All right. All right. Well done, Loz. Good seg. Black Triple M's Live with Rue, Dits and Loz. To live like Rue, Dits and Loz. I just want to live. And score one of three awesome Live Golf prizes. Live Golf Adelaide, April 26 to 28. Tickets at livegolf.com. All right, uh, yesterday was the last day for our competitors to get mm-hmm. out and about with our cardboard cutouts. The more exposure they could get with these cardboard cutouts, get on the news, yep. get on TV, get you know, get seen, mm. um, the more likely they would be winning these prizes. First place, you'll be living like dits on a trip for two to the UK, for the Live Golf Tournament with flights and accommodation. Second place, you live like Rue. Two corporate hospitality tickets to the watering hole at Live Golf Adelaide and an mm. Inside the Rope experience on event day. And third place, live like me, double pass to Live Golf Adelaide and then off to Fisher. So it's so, time to give away the third place. Yeah, it? I think before we do that, we get to hand out some bonus points. Oh. So uh, to all the competitors that have been taking part, we've we've got 5,000 bonus points each to okay. give away. This is important, um, yep. It is very important. I've decided to give 5,000 bonus points to a woman named Rachel. Mm-hmm. Um, 
she's been very competitive, Rachel, but I did actually happen to meet her and she put a sticker over the part of the um, cardboard cutout that was a bit rude. That was an accidental th- hand oh, gesture that I was doing yes. and she covered it up, right. which I thought was very generous of her and kind. Oh. Um, she got us in the advertiser as she well. She got us in the advertiser. She's She's been everywhere. She was out down at a presser I was mm-hmm. at. So yeah. How many bonus points? 5,000 to Rachel 5, from 000. me. 5,000? Yep. All right. All right. Who are you well, going to give yours to, Ruth? Well... I just thought um, Elliot was fantastic. Uh, he just went around to so many different places and got our cardboard cut out everywhere. But he got us on Sunrise at Tail and Bend yeah. Yeah. down there, which I Righto. thought was a, a great effort. And that was one of the first real highlights Big we moments, had. Yeah. 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 We, uh, we issued a challenge about how high you could get us. Mm. And Drew got us onto a private jet. You did. That's high. That's pretty so high. So I'm going to give him 5,000 bonus points for that. So All well right. Done. So we've given out our bonus points. Yes. Does it mean it's time to announce the third place? It is. It. Okay. In the third place. For Fisher tickets. For Fisher tickets and tickets to Live Golf. Mm. Rachel. Rachel. Rachel from, Semaphore, from Semaphore, Park. Semaphore Park. Congratulations. Woohoo! Yeah. Congrats, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Have you had fun with party it? Party with you, Loz. Oh, um, I can't wait either. <laughs> No, yeah, it was good fun. Um, definitely was exhausted by the weekend, but <laughs> yeah, has really shown me how much like network I have in Adelaide. So yeah. it's been awesome. Oh, good. Now, you did you, a great job. What yeah. are you going to do with the cardboard cutout? You're going to keep dits, obviously, and then burn the rest, or? <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> we've um, we've put you up at the uh, squatters' arms where you will remain oh. squatters ah. until you nice. get put down. Right so. right. <laughs> Isn't that a shout? The squatters' arms. <laughs> It is, I think, on the corner of... Uh... Then on Port Road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, okay. we did have you at Adelaide Airport, but um, we thought we'd leave you there. Right, the squad yeah. is like a ghost town. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I hate to see oh, what's happening to us. Well, well right, and enjoy Fisher and enjoy the golf as well. So first and second place we'll announce later on this morning. Ooh. Yeah, look forward to it. Yep, not too far away from that. It's Live Like Roo, Dits and Laws. All thanks to Live Golf Adelaide. April 26th to 28th. Just a couple of days away now. Exciting stuff. Tickets at livegolf.com. Plan Triple M's Live with Roo, Dits and Loz. To live like Roo, Dits and Loz. I just want to live. And score one of three awesome Live Golf prizes. Live Golf Adelaide. April 26th to 28th. Tickets at livegolf.com. Earlier this morning we announced third place and it was... It was Rachel. From uh, Semaphore from Park. From Semaphore Park. She's off to see Fisher at Live Golf. And um, she took. She was a very strong contender. Yeah. Um, she got us a lot of exposure with her cardboard cutouts. Yeah. But um, it's come down to two people. It has two final contestants. Now this is for the trip to England to the UK. We're going to fly you into London, and then the live tournament in Birmingham. This is the big prize. The runner-up will get to go down like Rue and be in the big corporate box. This is uh, worth over a grand, about 1200 bucks worth for a couple yep, of people to go at the watering down. hole. The watering Incredible hole. inside the ropes experience now, on event day. Uh, for the people of Adelaide, you won't have to put up with our cardboard cutouts anymore. Oh my God. What are some of the, fa- where are some of the places? Ever, we've, we've... One of them snuck into the uh, entertainment centre, snuck in and climbed up the top dits and put it up on the railing up there for You're the whole concert on Wednesday night. We've been into Adelaide over, we've been on the boundary line, we've been down to footy park, had yep. photos up in with a plane. We've been on the news, line. seven news, ten we've been on every news. We've yeah. been in the advertiser. Yeah, yep. we've been, all right. We've been these, everywhere. These two lads have done an outstanding job. Good morning, Drew from Glenelg. Good morning, and how are you? Good morning, Elliot from Goodwood. Good morning. Okay. Did you sound nervous, Elliot? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm just yeah. all right. <laughs> Patient, <laughs> patiently See, waiting. You oh, boys. Your guts would be a You mess. boys are down to the last two. For a trip for two to the UK... For the Live Golf Tournament, flights and accommodation in first place with 124,600 points. Elliot from Goodwood. Yes! 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 <laughs> Elliot, you are off to the UK. Now, Drew, you were magnificent, magnificent mate. You mate. really, really were. And it's we're so sad that we can only give this to one person. But, Drew, thanks for your efforts. You were on 110. No, perfect. It's been brilliant. 110,350 points, mate. Like, you were, you were very close behind. Oh. And it's going to be an awesome day. You yeah. Couldn't have done much more, Drew. No. Private yeah. jets and all sorts, mate. Well done. A very, very good second. Yeah, so, Thank Drew, you, you are off no to the worries, watering mate. hole, okay? See you down there, mate. See you down there, mate. Uh, now, I'll Elliot, tell my wife to expect me later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Elliot, who are you going to take to the UK with you? 
Oh, I've had so much help this whole whole uh, journey. This last week's been so much fun. Um, I think I'll be in a bit of trouble if I don't take my girlfriend. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what's, what's her name, Elliot? What, what's that, sorry? What's her name? Her name's Millie, so she's been awesome. She's, um, I mean, like I said, I've had so many people help me, but she's been great. I just do want to give a little shout-out to my workplace, Solar Wholesalers up in Mount Barker. They've... Um, been so good. I've barely worked the last week. So, uh, yeah. Solar wholesalers, are they? That's it. That's like good business. Should people be using yeah. them? Yeah, of course. We're, they're just such a good bunch of people. And, uh, yeah, I'm so grateful to work for them. So. Oh, mate. Well, Elliot, it's been a lot of fun, mate. And you've, you've been outstanding. You really have. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. It's been awesome. Good what? on you, Elliot. Congratulations, cool. mate. Oh, that's Thank- so cool. Well Thank done. you. Triple M Breakfast with Rue, Dits and Loz. The best breakfast show in Adelaide. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lehman. Lehman! I'm Anthony Lehman. Oh, he joins us on the eve of Anzac Day. And I mention that because, Lemo, in your time, you've flown around the world and, uh, well, amused and entertained our troops, haven't you, at times? I have indeed, Dits, and it's been one of the great joys of my life uh, performing for our troops in all manner of uh, locations around the world. And one of the great things I've been able to continue doing since then is to be an ambassador for a few organisations that support our troops. Yeah, right, right. One of those is an organisation called Soldier On, which looks after our wounded veterans and their families. And I want to share with you this amazing story uh, from a fundraiser. uh, It was about 10 years ago now. In fact, it was their first ever gala dinner, which I was emceeing in Canberra. Black tie function, room full of pretty heavy hitters. There were a couple of former prime ministers there, the head of army, the head of navy, et cetera, et cetera. Governor General was there. And there was an option to raise money. And the auctioneer was just kind of rolling through the items, which we've all seen that a thousand times at fundraising uh, dinners. And then the auctioneer gets a painting and he goes, all right, next up uh, is this painting. It's the uh, Battle of the Neck. All right, let's start the bidding at, say, $1,000. And then Dr. Brendan Nelson, who was the head of the War Memorial at the time, yeah. runs up onto the stage and says, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Let me just give a bit of background on this painting uh, before we go to the auction. The auctioneer goes, oh, yeah, sure. So he hands over to Brendan Nelson, who then went on to deliver the most extraordinary speech I've ever seen in my life. Mm. And I'll give you... A very, I'm paraphrasing here. He was spoke for about 20 minutes, but I'll give you the nuts of what he said to the room as the auctioneer is standing there holding the painting of the Battle of the Neck. So he goes, the Battle of the Neck uh, happened at, started at 4.30 a.m. on the 7th of August, 1915 in Gallipoli. Now, it was four waves of the Australian Light Horse Brigade, and it was a useless... Um, useless attack on the Turks, and it was actually uh, dramatised in the movie Gallipoli with um, uh, Mel Gibson. Yeah. So he goes, the first wave, 150 people at 4.30 in the morning, 150 men, all basically aged under 23, jump, run over, but the Turks are waiting for them at 4.30 in the morning, and they just mow down 150 Australian soldiers. And then the second group line up, the next 150. Now, they've seen what just happened. And they line up and 150 go and they get mowed down. Jeez. Then they send a message back saying, this is hopeless. We can't continue. Let's not do this. And the message comes back from the majors. You've got to jump over. And the Turks were yelling out, don't come, don't come. But the, so the leader of the Australian forces in that third wave, his name was Alexander Henry White, stood up, addressed 150 men and said, men, you are about to die, but I will lead you to your death. <laughs> and they stood on the fire step and they ran and they got mowed down. <sighs> and then the third, the fourth wave, the last 150, lined up, took their wedding rings off, were given 20 minutes to get their affairs in order, wrote letters to loved ones, hugged each other. There was one bloke called Trevor Rush, hugged his best friend, and he said, goodbye, God bless you, Cobber. And they jumped and they got mowed down. Mm. Just incredible. But in that first wave was a guy who was killed but went with his brother, Benjamin Smith. Now, his brother spent four days looking for his dead brother in amongst those bodies. Mm. And he couldn't find him. But he found a pine cone. 
And he sent that pine cone home to his mother and he said, this is for your son, your son that was killed. And the mother managed to propagate three seedlings out of that pine cone, planted three trees. And when the War Memorial opened in 1934, she sent one of those trees to the War Memorial. And there's a beautiful Aleppo pine out the front of the War Memorial in Canberra to this day. But in 2012, that tree was hit by lightning, which knocked a branch off the top of the tree. And Dr. Brendan Nelson says, and the wood from that branch makes the frame of this painting. Oh, my Give God. Oh. Mm. And it was like, <laughs> all right, Jeez. where are we going to start the bidding, people? And the <laughs> first bid was... <laughs> The first bid was forty thousand dollars. What? Oh my god! <laughs> You're joking, <laughs> Limo. Uh, when I tell you the hairs on my entire body are standing on end after that, it's why every year you've got to educate your kids. Sorry yeah. to preach here, but go to a door yes. service. Please understand what sacrifices were made, what has happened before <laughs> us, <laughs> and yeah. why we have to continue to recognise this. I, I just, I can't express that enough. And you think about it. You know, these people, 18, 19, 20 years old, mm. imagine standing there, you watch 150 people get mowed down and then you go. Yeah. But what about the opposition saying, don't come, we exactly. don't really want to do this? Yeah. 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 Doesn't make much sense, does it? But it just goes to show, you know, like all those good people lost in war because of the decisions of a few people mm. that are, aren't on that battlefield. And the courage of those people on, on the battlefield. And in my opinion, the lack of courage of someone who expects other people to run mm. out for them. It mm. boggles the mind. It's crazy. It was depicted really well in the movie Gallipoli. Yeah. Just the British generals just saying, nah, send him over. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right, mm. Lemo. Brilliant story, Lemo. You know, spare a thought for not just the diggers that have made the ultimate sacrifice. We've lost 100,000 over the years in all our wars. Wow. Uh, but think about the ones that are... Currently uh, serving on deployment overseas away from their families as yep. well tomorrow. Yep. Good on you, Lemo. Thanks for joining us, mate. There he is. Lemo joins us every Wednesday morning. Well, we had Tex in yesterday and we were talking about Anzac Day and because his birthday's on Anzac Day and does he go to the dawn service and do all of that? And he told us this story. Well, last year I took Hugo and it was... It was a bit of a mm. colourful morning. Yeah, uh, you wanted to go to the toilet the whole time. Mm. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> so I took him back to the car and said, well, there's a box here. Just use the box and we'll sort it out later. Mm. No, Number no, two. no, 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 Dad. No. Oh, you really do can't it. do that. You just can't go you off can. the You like have that. to improvise with I know you do. sometimes. You do. Absolutely you do. It's good that he didn't just go on his pants. A lot of kids would have done that. He's got enough <laughs> yeah. control that he didn't do that. Yeah. And also he refused to go on the box. Yeah. He knows that he wants a toilet. Yep, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so mm. remember, have we got the grab from the walk last year, the hike for hope? No, not yet, but we no, will we have it soon. Oh, yeah. the other I got of... caught short once years ago. I was staying at my cousin's place and uh, I was in the uh, height of, you know, trying to be fit at the time and I was going mm. for a run and I'm really, really sorry to anyone. How that... long ago is this? Oh, it's a long time ago. It's when I was, you know, probably 30 years of age, I was right. still having to be fit, but because, um, boy, I don't now. Um Anyway, uh, running in the Edwardstown area, and I went to the Oval, and luckily it was dark. It was at night after tea time, and I was and I had to go badly. And it doesn't normally happen, but uh, had to go. And uh, so, if you ever use the velodrome there, there's a there's a bike track around the Edwardstown Oval. Uh, just what would it be up the northern end? I'm sorry, but in the bushes there, I um Can I you had tell us exactly what pl- which tree? which bush it was. No, I probably can't. What'd you use to wipe? Uh, leaves. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. That's all there was. It's dangerous doing that. Yeah. yeah. Why? Spiders. My uncle did that on a grapevine and it had just been sprayed with uh, Roundup and <gasps> his whole well, it uh, killed bum, him, uh, skin <laughs> come off. Should have killed <laughs> any germs or bacteria. Oh, mm. got rid of his crabs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not that he had so that. So he did a poo in the bush. He did a poo in the bush. Poo yeah. jogger. Oh. Edwards Town Oval. You're, you're the poo jogger. No, I'm not. Do you remember that? In my life. Yeah. That took us by storm. Well, this was on the hike for Hope last year where we did a 30k walk. He said, uh, yeah, I was cruising along. I just had to find a toilet. So I went into this one place and they said, well, we haven't got a toilet. I said, oh, shit, that's no good. Do you know where one is? He said, oh, maybe next door's got one. So he walked around there and went in there and they weren't even open yet. Oh, so. No. So he saw a couple of um, sort of dumpsters in the right. back of a place and thought, well, I just I have to go, otherwise I'm going to do it at my dad's. Oh, 
my No, not in the dumpster. God. So he's jumped into the dumpster. <laughs> no. Oh my and done God. a dumpster in the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> in the green bin. <laughs> and then he said he jumped, he stuck his head out over the top. He just picked it at about, what, about 6.30 in the morning just to see if there was anyone there. No one, no one there. So he jumped no. out and kept walking. Oh, no harm done. Oh, oh. where's the strangest place you've had to do a number two? Where have you had to do a number two? We're talking the strangest emergency poo you've ever done. Yeah. Well, yeah. You have to do it oh, sometimes. Oh, that was. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> too right. much. We've all done those sort of ones, but <laughs> we're talking, yeah, we're talking. You're just out and about. Well, Texas little boy was at the dawn service. This is how it all came about, and he, uh, he just had to go desperately. Well, I just had a text on the text line before from a bloke who knows Tex and knows where he probably went and said there are public toilets there. Mm. But anyway. Well, Tex said there weren't. It's yeah. a very he said, he said situation. Yeah. We need oh, both no, sides of the story. Go Let's go to Mano Para. Andy, where did you have to do a number two? How are you going? All good? Yeah, yeah good, good, thanks. Mate. I was uh, with the State Emergency Service and uh, we had to do a uh, search and rescue training weekend up at um, Powera National Park and I got placed as a casualty in a cave for the lads to come and find me <laughs> later on the day. Well, the urge happened, so I had to go right up the back of the cave and uh, go and use my hanky. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's what a hanky should be for, the disgusting bloody things they are. That's where they uh, coined the phrase, there's a bear in the cave. Yeah. <laughs> How singing. was it? Good? Oh. <laughs> it was a relief. Yeah, oh, that's a great Did All you right. go far enough back like they didn't smell it when they came uh, in? Like, We're here to re- Oh, God, good, leave him good. in there. Exactly. Yeah. Bruno, yes. Virginia, where did you have to go? Oh, morning, gang. Yeah, I was painting uh, it was a few years ago now, and a lady decided she'd go out. And she asked me if I needed to go to the saloon. I said, no, no, I'm good. Well, about 10 minutes later, I decided I need to go to the saloon. I thought, where am I going to go? So I grabbed the 10 litre painting. Oh. <laughs> Went down the backyard and thought it's a little bit low, so I stuck it on top of a plastic pot upside down. Oh, no. And I'm sitting on there. Well, the plastic pot decided to just start giving way. Oh, no. So as I'm still going, I'm leaning and leaning and leaning. <laughs> Me too, I got the job done. And uh, yeah, just use the paint rag, that was all. Well done. Oh, Good on you, Bruno. Well, 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 yeah, a bit of turps on the bum, that'll clean yeah. it up. Let's go to <laughs> Fairview oh. Park. Steve, where did you have to do a number po- number two? Morning, guys. How are you going? Good. Good. Um, a few years ago, my brother and I went out in his little tinny, just out through uh, semaphore lugs, just mm. to do, drift a bit of squid. And the uh, the old iced coffee decided to kick in mm. and uh, just had to go and, um, yeah, found the little bucket in the boat oh, and, um, yeah, had to do it. And then uh, there was nothing, obviously, to clean up with. So um, I had to rip the sleeves off my druggy shirt <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, yeah, use those, and yeah, it Chuck was a, a very chilly, in the water. chilly morning. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what you got to do when you're out in the boat. Let's go to Mawson Lakes. G'day, Jordan. Uh, when did you do a number two? Morning, guys. How you going? Good. Yeah, good, good Jordan. Getting a bit so sicker was... here in poo stories, but yeah. anyway, tell us another one. Yeah. So I was a bit younger, about 16, 17 years old. I just got my first job. I was a uh, roller, sailor, roller shutter salesman. And uh, in little dorms in Naranda, New South Wales, I had a big night, ended up having about seven bowls of two-minute noodles the night before. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and there was, I was like, oh, God, I've got to go to the toilet quick. Of course, the boys were all having a shower, so I ended up having to pull out one of those under-table de- uh, little bins and... Uh, I just let absolutely rip. <laughs> oh, it went, no. it went absolutely everywhere. No. I, I, I had to tell him it was vomit, and oh, I ended up watching. No. I difference. ended up watching the cleaner clean it. No, oh, you. you're new. You're a sick oh, you're man. A That's sick not man. right. Let's go to Fairview <laughs> you're Park, a sick Gary. Sick man, Gary, have you had to do a p- emergency poop? I did, guys. How are you? Yeah, yeah good, Gary. <laughs> I was all right. Yeah, guys, I was taking the dog for a walk, and um, oh, no. unfortunately, I've got uh, Crohn's disease, mate. And if you know anything about Crohn's disease, oh, when no. you got to go, you got to go. Oh, no. And yeah, we're walking on a local track, and anyway, I'm already doing the shuffle, and I've got the the, the old cheeks clenched, and oh, yeah. yeah, no, I ain't going to make it. 
So rip down, rip the pants, and there's people walking, and, oh. I'm, in the, <laughs> and I'm in the bushes, and I'm bloody doing it, mate. The dogs looking at me, going, oh. "Well, I ain't picking that up, mate." Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you had people watching you, Gary. Oh, no. Yeah, well, they were trying to be polite, and they were turning their heads, but yeah, they definitely saw. Oh and, um, no. Yeah, and it's sort of hanging off the bush, and it's on the floor, and it's all over me. Gary, what area? <laughs> what suburbs is this? Fairview Park, mate. Don't go walking your dog down there. You're shitting your own there, nest, right? Gary. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. What? All right, Lee. Oh, last one. Lee. Lee, let it end. Lee from yeah, Gawler. What happened to you, Lee? How are you? Yeah. Yeah. Where have you done a poo, Lee? Uh-huh. Uh, so I was a young fella kicking around with a couple of the mates um, up in Keith. And uh, you know, the big, yeah, the big silos that, that run along mm. the side of the ro- you um, railway. didn't. <laughs> Yeah, so we were up the top there, and um, I had to send one off. Mm. Off the top of the silo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So oh, then yeah. As, we were, as we were coming down, we had to have a quick look, and, yeah, it was as thin as a piece of paper. Right. So. Right. <laughs> Just flat. <laughs> lost, lost, lost the sock and lost a bit of dignity at the same time. But. Oh. Is that what they call one of those long drop toys? That's a bloody <laughs> That's long, a long drop. drop. You could have oh, killed God. someone. <laughs> He could have hit by a flying turd. Can you imagine? All right. Auto Cam, real time video from Auto Masters. Triple M's rumor mill. Triple M's rumor mill, Adelaide's most listened to segment. Hear it every day at 7.40 on Rue, Dits and Loss. Uh, this rumor today is on the back of another rumor that we've talked about before that there's been a massive building built behind. Uh, uh, Parliament House there, and did she drop the rumour about um, 2KW getting annoyed about a second tower that, yeah. that might be approved, That's which right. got Skills confirmed last uh, week that it uh, has been approved, and now there's people unhappy that's going to block the view. Uh, that's going to be, I think, around 10,000 people working in that tower. It's a huge tower and mm. lots of people. So on back of that and the other tower and all that development along there, apparently the government is looking at... Uh, uh, technologies to and ways to clean out the torrents in that whole area to make that the water quality a hell of a lot better. So mm. they're going to look there and up higher in the torrents because uh, they want that area to be a real spectacle yeah. for people who come to our city and go. Do we want to do water area. sports down there. I don't know if they want to go back to skiing and all that sort of thing, but I think they would definitely like to get rid of algae and yeah. all the stuff that's well, in be the good. water. So uh, I remember as a kid, there used to be a big swimming race down there every summer. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like, And I mean hundreds of people. It was a real long swim. I can't remember how long, but they, the swim ended at the Morfitt Bridge. Um, so it went all down past Elder Park and everything, but you wouldn't be able to do that now, would you? No, my friend fell in there and he had to go on antibiotics. <laughs> That's not a joke. Oh, well, <laughs> well, that's not good, is it? No. Yeah, we, so, yeah. If you want people going in it, you need to. Yeah, they're looking a lot higher up as well, and trying to work out how they can uh, uh, fix it up. So okay. well, watch that's good. this space good over the next thing. few years. You might we see should clean a torrent. Do more with that space, really. Yeah. When you think about it, it's so beautiful. It is, and yeah. if it's going to be as populated as what it looks like, it's going to be with some more high-rise buildings. And yeah. why aren't I shocked that one of Loz's friends fell in the torrent? Yeah, it was a dress-up <laughs> party too. He was oh, dressed oh. as the Joker. Oh, and nice. I'm not that the police were called because I yeah. thought there was some sort of incident. Yeah. yeah. It was one of her Batman friends. Didn't, yeah. Batman didn't Sean, love you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Rude, it's a loss. Triple M. Uh, we know that the Rush Hour is a, a national show. We have our Adelaide show. We have our Melbourne show. And Billy Brownless and James Brayshaw do a show over in Melbourne. It's number one yeah. over there. Very funny uh, segment. Mm. Or very funny show. And Bill does a joke on his show. And on Monday night, he did this one. Did you know that Sylvester Stallone, Jim? Oh, my God. He just got that Well, out. it's hard to get out. It's just <laughs> stupid. Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. It's not hard to get out. <laughs> was married three times? No. Three times, Jim. His first marriage was Rocky, and his second marriage was Rocky too. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's about right. Bill's standard. Right, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. He does his... So that, was mon- that, was Monday. that was Monday, the 22nd of April. Mm. Yeah. On Tuesday... The 23rd of April, Yeah, Tex did this one. Well, did you know Sylvester Stallone oh. is on his third marriage? Oh, no. Really? Is he? Yep. But I guess his first one was Rocky. Yeah. Oh. And his second one was Rocky, too. Oh, oh, cool. oh, no. <laughs> True. I reckon Tex's uh, joke segment that's is appalling. 
Maybe Rocky know. Three. I don't know about mm. that. Mm. Either Tex has stolen it or he's being fed material by someone who's mm. stealing it off of the rush hour. Gee. But we don't like to recycle gags here, so we're just sorry no. to everyone. Uh, Every one of ours is authentic. so 100% original. Yeah, but now to something very boring. Well, mm. we had the world's most boring man ring in the other day and told us a great story. There's a collection of historical artefacts celebrating the music of the Gregorian brothers Slava and Leonard. <laughs> if you're, if you're, oh, hang on, hang on. If you're into your sport... There's a lock of hair from boxing champion Les Darcy on display. <laughs> Les. Talking about there was a list released, but I know why the world, world's most boring man rang in. There was a mm. list released last week of the 100 most boring attractions in the world. Mm. And it just got us thinking, didn't it? Well, what was been... it? One of them was in Australia. That was it? That, he was talking about the museum in Perth. Yeah, yeah. it was in Perth, yeah. yeah. That made the top 15, I Do think. you know that bloke? Oh, I've met him. Yeah, mm. try not to spend too much time. He's a lingerer. Yeah, he makes you can't me, get rid of him. <laughs> makes me sound interesting, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, fascinating. <laughs> Which is good. Um, it's not easy. No. Um, so <laughs> we're thinking, what, what's something really, really, like you built yourself up, you'd paid for the ticket, and you got there and you went, you've got to be kidding. Mm. Or what about just getting dragged along? Things like kids' concerts. Oh, oh that's so concerts. bad, isn't it? Graduations. And you've got the two minutes when your own child or niece or nephew's on stage and it's the most exciting thing yeah. and then you've got to sit through two yeah. hours of yeah. just strangers' children doing the I worst. I did it once and I haven't been back. Awards nights can be pretty tedious, Mind can't Mind-numbing. <sighs> yeah. Oh, the speeches. Yeah. Just, you know what? I hate to say it. Very few people care what you have to say, and it's it's just it, that's why you're going to make them funny. Because yeah. if you can make the speech funny, right. then everyone's interested. But if you're yeah. just rattling off a list yeah. of deep and meaningful, it just numbs the brain. I went on a um on Year Ten camp. Something happened with our Year Ten camp. We don't really know what happened, but we were meant to go on an aquatics camp, and it sort of got cancelled last minute. So they still took us to the Riverland, but what they did was we didn't get to do any water sports, but we had to do a tour of all of the juice factories. And you all probably went to what? Cruster at Waker. Oh, yeah, no. I, I think we did. Oh. And I, there was one day where we got left. Did you see at, an orange get squashed? We saw oh. fruit. I saw fruit get squashed in every possible way you could imagine. Oh, goodness. There was a day where we went to this one juice factory and we were there for like six hours. Don't and we talk badly about Cruster. No, it wasn't Cruster. It was just a general <laughs> juice factory. Lockett Brothers. We had to wear hair nets and nets on our feet. Nippies. And we, Nippies. We, we walked around. And we ended the day in a room, a small dark room where we watched... Drinking a, orange juice. We watched a two-hour video on juice production. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and we were actually traumatised by how oh. bored we were. We were just going, let it end. Please let it end. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. Let it end. And I still I mean, how much can it. you say about juice? <laughs> oh, I say a lot, it. Yeah. You grow an orange and you squash it and you <laughs> drink it. Juice. That video oh, should have been 30 seconds. Church oh as a God. kid was tough. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Sunday morning before oh. footy. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Rue, every, every week. Oh. Yeah. The oh. best I thing, went every week. The best thing that happened to me was my oldest brother got his driver's license yeah. and we used to say to Dad, well, we'll go, uh, us three boys, we'll just go on our own and we'd just drive down the beach, have a milkshake and You come sit up. on those wooden benches. What about when oh. you, yeah. you, get, you get a bit of you know, volume in there? <laughs> Uh, last week, a list was uh, released, uh, the most hundred boring attractions mm. in the world. And a museum in Perth got on the list, and our world's most boring man went and visited and did a report for it. us. So uh, what have you been doing that's really boring? My niece got graduated. She graduated and uh, got a nursing degree, do you call it, or yeah. diploma, yeah. or whatever yeah, you yeah. call it, the other week. And uh, all the family came down, and they went. 300 people's names got read out there. Yeah. yeah. It was just too much for a couple of the family members yeah. who said, uh, we'll catch you at lunch. They went to the casino. Ask the photos, yeah. They walked out <laughs> went to the casino. Yeah. They just had enough. 300 different yeah. people's names got read out, had to go up, have the photo. Yeah. Just went on for hours and hours. The most boring thing you've been to, Simon from Melrose Park. Yeah, um, I uh, my daughter was in the choir at uh, Cabra and we got oh. uh, seconded into going to uh, a concert and we get there and, you know, you wait for a whole lot of songs to go and then she comes on and they sang Tragedy, the BG song, and I, I went, that is tragic, that's oh. tragic. Oh, and, oh. and, I, and my wife gave me the filthiest look and the music... Uh, uh, Chief was standing right next to me. <laughs> oh no, they heard oh, you. Oh no! What, did you tell your daughter it was, it, she did a great job? No. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so it, was, it was it was absolutely terrible. She's still in the choir. Or? Went, 
Uh, that was the last concert she ever was uh, sang in. Yeah, well, that's right. I went to. Yeah, yeah well, stepped on that drink. Hang your head in shame, Simon. Yeah. Let's go to Seaton. G'day, Neil. What's the most boring thing you've been to? Good morning, Rudits and Loz. Uh, the most boring thing that I've been to, um, I many many moons ago, I had to go to a museum and learn about the difference of insects that have vertebrae <laughs> against insects that don't have vertebrae. Oh, Neil, tell Neil, us, tell I'm us already the bored. Mate. Tell us the difference. Oh, uh, I was so bored I couldn't even tell you the difference. Oh, yeah. God, Neil. I, I tuned out like 30 seconds ago. Yeah. Now. Uh, I mean, right. yeah. Why, Thanks, can, can we get it back on why? Why did you have to do that? All right, so I decided that I wanted to become, or that I wanted to do winemaking. Oh. Right. So oh. Now that's say, interesting. There was different, so we are doing plant physiology yeah. and biochemistry yeah. and oh. soil. Yeah. That, that soil. was the exciting, that was the exciting part. Soil. I drew the, I drew the line. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. And when we went and had to learn about, and I'm like, yeah, it's lost me now. Yeah, yeah I found it. Just drink wine, Neil. Yeah. Don't worry about trying to make it. Let, yeah. let the experts do that. Yeah. Yeah. Building up to a big Anzac Day clash tomorrow. Collingwood Essendon has become one of the real highlights on the sporting calendar in Australia. Well, it's on tonight. In too. fact, games start tonight. Richmond and Melbourne tonight. And you'll hear the last post. And you'll hear Anzac it tomorrow. Day Eve. That's right. And uh, what's happened in recent years is you'll hear it all over the weekend. Uh, Triple M Breakfast Show in Brisbane, which also happens to rate number one, by the way. There's mm. a fellow called Marto, Greg Martin, who's played rugby union for Australia. So he's, he knows a lot about pomp and ceremony when it comes mm. to big sporting events. He had this to say yesterday. But now what's happened, as football always does, and I'm not just talking AFL, I'm talking rugby league. They've taken a wonderful thing and they've gone... Oh, that's good. How Let's can we just... capitalise? All right. So what's going to happen this week in all eight games of the AFL and all eight games of the Rugby League and the Reds? Yeah. Everyone will get involved. Probably the netballers will get involved. Every single one of them will play this. And you'll get Anzac. You'll get bugle fatigue. Yeah. What do you think, Roo? Uh, I reckon it's bulldust. I've never thought that. Um, we just said before how brilliant Port Adelaide do it at Adelaide Oval. They had the bugle player up there on top of the scoreboard. It was, it's one of the best experiences you can get to. Not everyone can get to the MCG. It's Collingwood and Essendon. Tickets are that hard to get to. Uh, other people have got other things on Anzac Day. I want to go and watch my own club on Anzac Day, and I want to feel what it's like there. So... I watch more football than most people. I might watch three, four games over the weekend. I've never once said, hurry up and get the bloody bugle mm. finished. Yeah. I love it. It's spine tingling every time. How, like, how many times are you going to watch? You just said before you love seeing it at Port Adelaide. They do a yeah. brilliant job. Yeah. Yeah. Are they not allowed to enjoy the Anzac spirit? Are they not allowed to have people connected to Port Adelaide down there? Are they not allowed to award the Peter Babco medal and all of that? Or yep. Yep. No, just leave for points. Essendon and Collingwood? Yep. Or? I agree with Lars, what do you think? I understand what he's saying that you, you know, the fact that you overdo it, obviously, it's like hearing the same song over and over again and it loses its spark. But it but only... How many people watch six games of football? No, no, I agree. And I, I think it's he probably watches all of it because of who he is and his job and his love of sport. But most people will see one or two games exactly. and it'll be nice for them and... Look, I don't think you can really pay too much respect to the Anzacs, in my opinion. So as, as many as you can get in. Um, it's not about profit. The clubs aren't doing it for profit. They're doing it to, re, to respect, in, respect mm. and enjoy yeah. the, the weekend. Well, you yeah. don't want to be the only club that doesn't do the thing that's the sure. respectful thing. So, yep. yeah, I, I get what he's saying, but I also think, you know, just cop it on the chin if it bothers you. Right. Sports Card World, the specialists in sports cards and trading card games. Sports Card World, Region Arcade, Rundle Mall. Triple M Breakfast with Lou Dits and Lies. What's a goal? Overnight Sports. Uh, let's talk the Crows. Darcy Fogarty's heaped praise on his teammate Josh Rochelle for taking ownership of a couple of those mistakes he made at the weekend. A young fella to, to sort of have those moments and then come out and completely own it, I think it just shows the maturity that he has. Um, and, yeah, I, I guess there's no better way that he could have handled that. He's, he's copped it, and I don't think it'll happen again for a while. I'm well, looking forward to see how he responds now after owning it, uh, how he can, if he can bounce back and play some pretty good footy. Because apart from those little incidents, he's been going all right the last couple of weeks. But a little bit of extra pressure on now. Let's see how he responds. That'll be the, uh, that's where the proof is in the pudding. All right, Port Adelaide, uh, Travis Boat could return for them from that back injury. 
Uh, Lockie Jones has been given the all clear as well. Zach Butters plays his 100th game when they take on the Saints on Friday. And what a 100 games they've been too, Rude. Yeah, good play. Charlie Dixon would be back too, I would have thought. Yeah. Now, there's been a bit of talk. I saw Zach Butters... Uh, Talking about this on the news, that all of those gun midfielders, they don't actually, they haven't spent a lot of time in there in the middle at the same time, and they're just wondering, yeah, are they getting the mix right? Let's hear from him. Yeah, I think the balance has been good. I think it's not all about us three. I think we've got a Brownlow medals in there, and Ollie Wines, and and Willem Drew plays his role and definitely complements us. Yeah, we'll get our chances where it's just me, Connor, and Jason, but. Um, I think we've got a, a pretty good, talented group in there. That it, it doesn't always have to be us. Friday night football at Adelaide Oval. Uh, Port Adelaide do the Anzac Day clash absolutely brilliantly. I, just can, I will never get it out of my mind the night they had the bugle player up on the top of the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Brilliant. From yeah. out of nowhere, there was just yeah. a light shining on the top of the old heritage scoreboard, yeah. and there was a, a, a military person uh, doing the bugle, playing the bugle. It was yeah. bloody spine too. It was. John Schumann sang... A great rendition of Only 19. Yeah. And they always award the Peter Badco medal as well, Port Adelaide. They do do it well. You're right, Rue. Now, uh, Anzac Day action gets underway tonight on the eve. Richmond has swung four changes for tonight's clash uh, with Melbourne, including the return of Dylan Grimes and Jacob Hopper from suspension. The Demons welcome back Cozzy Pickett. Yep. That's a big inclusion. Well, it's a big in, and uh, they'll be short price favourites. Melbourne to knock off Richmond. But uh, we've got five days of footy, Loz. Just, yes, just get used to uh, the TV. Just being on the mm. AFL at the moment. There'll be a few blues in households over the next oh, yeah, few days. Well, now you can hear all the action on Triple M from 5.30 tonight, uh, just after the rush hour. Uh, GWS, uh, they went to the tribunal last night. Jesse Hogan oh, got off. How did he get but off? But Toby Green's one-game ban he remains. You didn't even get a fine, Jesse Hogan. Mm. This is ridiculous. Mm. So uh, This is behind the play. Mm. Smacked him in the face. Yep. It slid up, hit him in the face yep. hard. Yeah. And nothing. They're like, all over the shop. How can you get off and surely you go back to a fine at least? Yeah, you'd reckon. The Tribune was actually having their worst year I've ever seen, yeah. I think. All right, now Geelong fans will be happy. Max Holmes has signed on until the end of 2028. Everyone was chasing him. Including been... Adelaide. You didn't bloody tell us that. Well, Port Adelaide, everyone would have asked the question about him, but uh, I think they pretty he pretty quickly would have said, yeah. I'm staying in Melbourne. Uh, yeah, Adelaide United haven't had a great year, but gee, they're producing some young talent. Another of their young players, Moussa Torre, uh, may be off to France. Hey, and just uh, to go back to footy for the yeah, moment. Well, we were, they, sorry? They go everywhere, these Yeah, they've, uh, but they've sent a couple of real good players players overseas this year. Uh, we they re- all born here in Adelaide and yeah. re- all raised in yeah. Adelaide? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez, we're spitting out some good quality. Yeah. Uh, the bump, we recorded that yesterday, Rue. We had a great chat. Uh, you know, and we're all a bit frustrated how our Adelaide and Port Adelaide teams are going, but uh, if you want to have a listen, if you love your Crows and Port Adelaide, a really great chat on the bump. You can search Rue, Dits and Loz on the listener app and, and look for the bump. Oh, another huge morning, but it's time for us to skadoodle. Yeah, it is. Rue said it earlier this morning, a bit of a funny feeling today because tomorrow's Anzac Day. A lot yeah. of people will miss Friday as well. So a uh, big, big break coming up. But it's a time to, to reflect and think about what is actually happening tomorrow. Yeah, have a cracking day tomorrow. And wherever you are on Friday, tune in to Triple M because we'll be on we'll air from be 6 here. to 9. Yes, that's right. What does Anzac Day mean to you? The Anzac spirit is what this is about. Money cannot buy... The sort of mateship. Mateship forever after. It is spiritual with us. The Anzac spirit was born in the trenches of Gallipoli so many years ago. We are the caretakers of their memories. Remembrance. We remember our friends that didn't survive. When I think about some mates that aren't here, sometimes I think, you know, why I'm here and why they're not. Take a moment to reflect on the sacrifices of our brave servicemen and women. My heart's breaking. He was the best of us. A courageous soldier who made the ultimate sacrifice for his country, but mostly a loving dad and husband. When you walk around those cemeteries and you see the insanity of so many killed, our primary duty years later is to remember. He's my only son and I remember him as that. (laughs) And you'll know I shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. 
Thanks for checking out the Rudits and Loz podcast, driven by the Ford Ranger Raptor, inspired by desert racing. Ford Ranger Raptor has been developed by the Australian design and engineering team with Ford performance DNA for true enthusiasts.